Well, hello everyone. I must admit, whenever I'm in North Devon, it's very difficult to resist the allure of the dipper. And uh, yeah, quick flip you around. Yeah, today's no exception on Camilla and I. Um, we're at the mouth of the River Lynn or Lynmouth. And uh, oh, what a beautiful little location this is for the dipper. Yeah, so when I've been here before on Camilla and I, it's been absolutely freezing. And uh, if you see, it's a real pleasure today not to be using gauntlets or gloves. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely superb. But uh, the weather's different and also the tactics are different. This is October now and um, they finished chick rearing. They can have two broods a year, the dipper. So now they tend to just feed for themselves. So they're only going to feed in one particular area. So that's what we're interested in. So we park ourselves in one rich area in which we know they're going to feed. So settings today on Kamuna and I are, um, well, one 3,200 per second for in-flight shots but we're mostly using one five hundredth of a second or below because um, they're mainly just bobbing up and down the dipper and uh, yep it's uh, as usual tricky exposure and the reason we chose this afternoon to come and photograph the dipper was because the light levels were particularly good and um, in a valley situation it often becomes quite dark in here and uh, you need a bit of light underneath the dipper ideally reflected reflected away from its breast ideally because uh, very tricky to expose for and um, yet if it gets too bright we have to use some negative compensation and uh, if it gets too dark we actually have to increase the uh, compensation just a, a tad so uh, yeah interesting conditions anyway very good. So nice not having to wear the gloves. Yes, I've just tucked myself in to the side of the bank. Just flip you around and show you my position. Um, I've literally just tucked in against the green bank so that uh, I've got some camouflage with my uh, green camo and then I've just waited for the dipper to appear and uh, yeah it's worked very well yeah so I find as long as you stay reasonably low low to the water level and you put a few objects in between you and the subject I've got a bit of a uh, a dead weed in between me and the subject and that uh, just gives you enough of a screen to hide behind um, but obviously I'll try and get down as low as I can in order to uh, get the angle on the bird but, but yeah it's not necessary to uh, go to complete camouflage mode not if you just stay still and keep your wits about you. They can come quite close. Yes, yeah, so I've had quite a lot of success with them coming up this bank on the left hand side. And um, yeah, just just the one. You only need one. And um, obviously they're feeding up for winter I suppose. And uh, yeah they will pick over an area and um, yeah really concentrate and get all the nutrients out of the uh, one area they can before they fly off to another area. Well in the breeding season it's normally like the M1 here they're up and down whoosh, whoosh, and uh, they uh, nest above this uh, bridge here well it's one of their nesting spots they may have moved on for all I know now but uh, yeah it's incredible and the uh, the feathers have got this amazing oil on them, gives them this incredible buoyancy. 
so uh, they can swim down, catch a caddis fly and then fly up, get a caddis fly larvae and then fly back up to the surface and um, yeah, amazing subject. It's just lovely to watch them going about their uh, feeding activity. Yeah, so I was very lucky. I only had to wait till about 20 minutes before one showed up. Um, but uh, obviously at this time of year, it's sheer luck when they're uh, really feeding frenetically. So it's a good idea to uh, scour the bank. I did have a look using the old uh, binoculars at one point to uh, scour the area just to see where they were feeding mostly. And um, yeah this seemed to be the best spot but now of course um, it's seen me um, it did see me at one point uh, it took a long time for it to uh, discover my presence which is quite surprising as I am pretty well exposed now but it did fly off when it saw me when it got within all oh, about 20 feet lovely well, I think I'm going to have to go on a bit more of a recce because I can't see any at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back. Well, I can't see any dippers now, so, uh, yeah, if I do get anything else, I'll put it at the end of this uh, video. But um, for now, thanks for watching an episode of Kamura and I. We will be back. Have a good one. Bye from Camilla and I.